there, everyone. How are we all diddling? Welcome back to Pommy and Oz. I hope we're all doing really well. Please drop a like. Please drop a subscribe. We're smashing subs at the moment. Well over the 1550 mark, which is absolutely gross. So please give it a share as well. So today what we're doing, it's trade season. So we know that that's when I come out of my little cave and get really excited. And I thought, it's good content time, really. And I thought, what could we do that's a bit exciting? So I thought, let's predict some trades that are going to happen and see how we get on at the end of trade time. You can see football season and the off-season, difficult for content. Everyone's doing quizzes. I thought it'd be a little bit nice and easy, this one. Adam Chera, probably the least kept secret in AFL. I'm going to predict here that Carlton will give pick six in a future second and get a third back. And Mr. Chair, he looks pretty good in blue, doesn't he? Does not look bad. And it is what Cowan want, isn't it? They want another midfielder. They want to add a bit of depth in there. They want a bit of class. This guy fits the bill for Cowan. He's an Italian boy as well, which we do love one at Cowan. I think he really does fit the bill. He's got a bit of outside class about him. He can work the ball inside. He gives great rotation, which is an issue for Cowan on the ball, in that on the ball set. So he really excites me. I think he's got a lot about him as well. He's got a lot of room for growth. It's a good deal, I think, for both parties as well. Because you've got to remember, Fremantle, he's out of contract. I'm not so bad with that deal as well, because there's talk that he's reduced his salary demands as well. So it fits the bills in all the right places. Let's get it done. Welcome to Carlton, Mr. Chera. And then the second one, I was a bit harsh to this guy, big Jared Brander. I reckon he's going to end up at St. Kilda. I reckon it'll be pick 66, 67. Jared Brander goes there. And he's the kind of St. Kilda player, isn't he? Because he's kind of a licorice all sorts. You're not quite sure what he does. And I think he slots in there. I think he gives them the forward option. He gives them depth down back. And if they do for Bantz, want to play him on the wing, evidently he's a wingman. AFL is weird, isn't it? But I think this suits both parties. I mean, obviously, I don't think West Coast will ask for a lot for him. They can't really. And I think he really just slacks in there and he gives Ratton a lot of options there. He does really, he's a real good squad player, real good depth for them. And it gives them ability to utilise some players in and around the ground. So I like Jared Brander. I think um, it's a, that that's a good one, that. I, I, I can't wait to analyse that one when he doesn't go for that. Next one, we've got Lipinski. Big Pat Lipinski at the uh, Doggies at the moment. And he's a very good player, underrated, probably trying to get into one of the most uh, depth-filled positions that the dog is. Needs a change of scenery. And I think he really suits what they're looking for. They haven't really had this type of player at Collingwood since Phillips left. And I think he's a direct replacement. He's classy on the ball, really good on the outside. Slots into the half forward. Loves kicking a snag on the entry inside 50 as well. I think he suits the bill. He really does. I think him and Nick Dacos, they're going to make a nice little pair. And I think that's a good deal all around there because the Doggies, I don't think, Doggies genuinely in their trades as well. They're quite fair. They want to let players go and stuff. So I like this one. I think that this one's a real good solid trade for both parties. I think Lipinski will really enjoy that change of scenery as well. It'll slot into what I think the Pies will try and do. Bit of class, bit of uh, outside use there. Top player as well. So I think it's a bargain. And I think then that'll suit what the Pies are trying to achieve. Next one, future second going to Port for Big Laddams. I've done him a favour as well because that guy has got a giraffe neck, I tell you. So on that Photoshop there, done him a right solid. And I think uh, St Kilda and Port will be happy with this deal. I think it's a solid deal all round. Um, it, it's weird because I think that this guy here really will be a top-level player. For me, I'm surprised not more clubs are in for him because I think he could be the sole Ruckman. I think this has got a bit of Scott Lyser about it. A guy that's kind of always played second fiddle and once he finds the right fit, he'll be a real solid Ruckman. Really helps because I think that the way that St Kilda want to play is they want to play dual Ruckman. They like that. I think Rowan Marshall as well, for me, is a little bit more solid in the forward line. So I think this gives them real strike options and a real good target in Marshall and King. And then having Laddams playing in the rook. Real good player as well. Works the ends of the ground really well. I'm a big fan of Laddams. I'd love him at Carlton. And I think he's solid. This one breaks my heart up next. Oh, God. I love SPS. And 
it hasn't quite worked to Carlton. And I think if we're going to be fair here, I look at it from the Eagles' point of view, would I want to be paying a lot for this kid? Probably wouldn't, though. I actually think here, though, this is my suggestion. I think pick 29 will come across. Could be pick 36. I'm going to give a caveat. And I think we'll give him 64 and we'll give him SPS. I think he suits the game style of the Eagles. And I think that there's probably... There is a huge element of risk for the Eagles with this because obviously for two years, he's been fannying around down the back line. He's not a backman. He is a midfield forward. And I think here this deal represents fairness for both parties because they get the 29, they give that up. Okay, that's probably slightly overs for him. They get the 64, which on points kind of scales it back to a mid-30s. Coward are happy we've got the extra pick that we can burn for some player and also they get SPS, who really could be a really good trade. This has got like kind of that Kennedy vibe about it that it's not quite working out at Carlton, but it could really work out there. I think it's a fair deal for both parties. I think he's a very good footballer. I'm a big fan of his. I think a change of scenery, a little bit of a change of work ethic. Um, he suits the same, he suits the West Coast model. And I think that that will be around the deal. I think you'll see a couple of bit of picks being exchanged in that one. I've got a feeling that it's going to be a straight swap. And I think it's going to be 29 or 36 for 64 in SPS. And best of luck to you, mate. But it breaks my heart, man. Up next, Brisbane, they're after a tall target. Um, we know Hipwood is going to be a while out. It's probably going to be early doors. You'll see him. They need another target, though, to help Danaher out. And I think they'll go with Mason Cox. And I think it'll be pick 54 and pick 60 for the big Texan. And... I'm excited about this because I, I like Mason Cox, but I find it hard because he's a Collingwood guy and I find it hard. Swoop Luke's probably my limit of people that I'll, well, actually, it's not true. There's a few Collingwood people I like, but he's, he, he makes me want to like him a bit more now. 54 and 60, I think he, it's a good deal. And I, I think, controversially, I don't think Mason Cox is as bad as people give him stick for because he does what he says on the tin, doesn't it? He, he, he's a tall target. and. He's just cumbersome. And I think in the right system, of the Lions, they've got an ability to turn shy into gold. I think this will be a good one. 54 and 60 is really good value for Collingwood as well because they're just a mass in picks because they've done the most banter trade ever with Gold Coast. Gold Coast have literally said, oh, it's all right, we'll buy your day cost. I mean, our club's in complete shambles, but we'll help you out. Complete banter of the AFL trades. And I think this one is going to be a fair one. Mason Cox really does fit what they want. They want a stop gap. They want an intermediate. And I think he'll be solid for them. And I wouldn't be surprised as well for this guy just to pull some rabbit out of his ass in the finals. But I think that's a fair trade. Up next, we've got another team that I hate, Essendon. They're going to get Ben Long in. Look at Ben Long. That Photoshop is solid. The bit of a green around him because the green screen hates hair. But I like that. I think they'll pay 51 and 56. I think Ben Long will come in. And I like Ben Long, and I think that's something that Essendon lack. They lack a little bit of mongrel. And he can play both ends of the ground. We know he's more predominantly a backman. I think he's a really exciting talent. Um, it, I'm surprised St Kilda are letting him go, but I do think they will do. And I think 51 and 56 is decent value for both parties because he hasn't really set the world alight yet. He's just solid. And I think he really slots in. I think he'll really enjoy the change of scenery. And I think that you'll see a few players this year move. And I think change of scenery is going to come into it. And I, I do like Ben Long. I do like what he brings. He's one of the players that I do enjoy watching. And I think he really suits that. He adds that little bit of toughness down there. They've got a bit of class down the back. I think they add that little bit of toughness. Make them a better side. And St Kilda, they do, they'll, they'll work a bit of wonders with them picks as well. Then we've got another one, Lewis Young. I'm excited about this one. I reckon that future third that came on the Chera deal will bring us Lewis Young. And then when you make Chera be Lewis Young, Chara for pick six is pretty good, isn't it? It's looking good. So I reckon that'll come in. Lewis Young will join us. And that gives us that reliability down the back. Someone's done the development for a few years for us. He's a young kid. Real, real strong in the air. Real good spoiler. I'm really excited about this kid. I'm really excited. I think this might be one of them dual picks that Carlton do. You know, that little dual when you look back and you're like, Mwah, what a selection. Got a feeling about this one. Got a feeling about this one. I do like it. And I think it will be a real solid pick for us. I think uh, the Doggies, again, they're a team that are really fair in trading as well. So I reckon this is the deal. I reckon this one's nailed on. I reckon I'm going to get two right. This is one of them. Up next, we've got Jordan Clark. Now, we know that they're messing about 
with it. Now, I've got a feeling that this is the deal. Again, I've got another sneaky. I think pick 27 and the future second that Carlton give them for 34 and Clark. And that gives them a real nice draft stock, Frio. And we know Frio like attacking the draft. I think it gives them real good movement room. Geelong aren't bothered about the draft because unless they bring a old age pensioner draft in, Geelong ain't going to attack it. So they don't really value picks, they, but they will do next year when they're like, Jesus Christ, our team's older than Dad's army. I, I'm happy with this pick, and I think it's a real good acquisition. Jordan Clark, I think, really does is the stop gap for Chera because he plays across the halfback and on the wing. I really like Jordan Clark. I am a big, big fan of him, and I think it really gives them options. They've got a lot of players that I think they can help internally, but I think Jordan Clark just adds that class straight away. He's got real good engine on him. You saw them some of the snags he's kicked as well are audacious. Really attacks inside 50 hard. I'm a big fan of Jordan Clark. And I think this deal really represents good value for both parties. I think, I know I'll take the piss out of Geelong, but I think they'll use them picks well and um, it really helps them out in the draft to acquire some young talent because then they can acquire some young talent in the next couple of drafts and suddenly that age profile doesn't look so bad. Then we've got John Dawson. Now this one's one that I've been racking my brains how they get it done. And I thought, that they, I actually think this trade is genius. Future first from Adelaide. So you're probably going to project that to be about, what, top four, top five? Maybe higher, but can Adelaide do it? And Dawson and 11. Now, I think Sydney will not probably attack the draft this year because they've got a lot of young talent. So I think they'll look at this and think, Jesus, next year we've got a few decent picks. We can really analyse the draft. With a year, hopefully, of COVID, with the young players playing a lot more than they are now, I think that presents value. I think it's a fair deal because I think, yeah, I just think that that's a, a nice little deal all around there for both parties. Probably a little bit stiff on City. There may be a few later pick swaps, but I like that one. I think Dawson as well slots into what Adelaide are building. Adelaide are building a really good list. I'm really impressed with Adelaide's list building. And I think Dawson just adds another layer to that class, another layer. Then we're going to go with my speculative. So I thought I'd have two left field ones. Now, this one here, Rory Lobb wants to leave Fremantle this say, trying to get a salary cap out there. And you'd say, looking at Freel's list, they want a forward. Now, Mitch McGovern, he's on a bit of money. Why don't we do a swap? Now, I like this deal. And I'll tell you for why. Carlton probably will be looking at some rook stocks. Rory Lobb, for me, is a really able ruckman and someone that allows you to play TDK or Pitnet and also have that feeling with and or them too. Have that guy who can do something else. Now, he's a handy forward himself, but I think Rory Lobb, Lobb's rook work is really underrated. And every time I watch him, he really impresses me play. His energy around the ground is really good. So I think if they just say, look, you know what? We're going to be liable for paying these guys a bit too much, probably. This deal makes sense because both of these fit decisions that they need now. I think TDK would be a brilliant serviceable third forward. You've also got JSOS there, Rory Lobb as well. So suddenly Carlton have got that option there that, you know, Lobb and TDK, they are going to play in the rook. So that makes more sense to be paying someone a salary for a job they do, as opposed to Mitch McGovern, who's more of an icing on the cake. Goes to Fremantle, he's needed. I think this deal makes sense. Now, I can't take full credit for this one because this was brought to my attention by a good friend of the channel who was suggesting this. So, big shout out to you, to you, Carl Breen, because this was one of your ideas. So, if it comes through, I don't want to take 100% responsibility, but I like this one. And I think that this may be a sneaky deal. I've got a feeling that Carl are working on something that we don't know. Up next is this one, Stephen Canelio. I reckon this is going to be, I've put two and two together. You've got Amazon Prime documentary on the trade period. They've got some up their sleeve. Now, Stephen Canelio was a real big part of the Amazon Prime documentary before. I reckon it makes sense. I reckon 29 in the future first for Stephen Canelio comes home to Perth, plays for the Eagles. And I reckon it is, I, I've got a feeling that I've come up with something that is so left field, it may be right field. I like this one. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. I think it makes great sense for both parties. GWS are very clever in their drafting. And I think it gives them an arsenal next year as well. Gives them a nice little speculative pick. A lot of tasty players that fit their profile in the late 20s, early 30s as well. 
And I think that this is something that they'll be looking at and thinking, yeah, yeah, we'll do this. Because Canelio, it hasn't quite worked. It gets them off the salary. It gets it gets him a change of scenery as well. And I think he'd really suit playing with Kelly. I think it's a great deal. I don't know how they'll fit it in the salary cap, but let's be honest, AFL salary caps are Mickey Mouse nowadays anyway. And half of his salary is played by Gill and his trust fund. So it should be a fine deal. I like this deal, and that's what I think. So let me know in the comments, what are you thinking? What Any trades? Look, give me some daft trades, some trades you think haven't been covered. Put your neck on the line. Show me some trades. Let me know what you think about them ones. Would you be happy with them acquisitions if you're at that club? And until next time, palm out.